Hello, um, I'm Dr. Anil Gode. I'm a consultant at Fertility Plus and uh, teach through fertility courses. And today I'm going to talk to you about a quite interesting subject. We all know that polycystic ovarian syndrome is has quite long lasting complications. We know that with PCOS, that is anovulatory, you will come across diabetes, hypertension, heart changes, lipid profile changes, and a complex challenges of the metabolic syndrome. Now, what we don't know is if a PCOS woman is successfully stimulated, which means we can, can make her into an ovulatory PCOS with medications, does she also carry significant risks? And that's something which has always been challenging. We also know that ovulatory PCOS do not seem to have the same amount of risks that come up with completely unovulated PCOS. And also we are aware that some women who are ovulatory PCOS slowly become insulin resistant and become anovulatory. The commonest reason is because they gain weight. And that's one of the reasons that happens. So to, what we're going to do today is have a short talk on is fertility reduced in ovulatory women with PCOS? And this is an opinion paper uh, which was presented in Human Reproduction very recently. And so what was it looking at? And it looked at PCOS, which is a multifaceted condition that is often associated with reproductive compromise. Women with anovulatory PCOS seem to have reproductive and endocrine abnormalities. And ovulatory PCOS, which means you, those women who you get to ovulate, whether or not they have the same complication is a matter of debate. So let's look at the clinical data. And the clinical data for women with PCOS are more likely to be nanny paras. 20% or have lower than match controls of first child and 40% have spontaneous pregnancies. But for women with PCOS, eventually the same number of children at the end of the reproductive age group. And that's because of the success of medical treatments that we have. So when you look at the pregnancy complications with PCOS, there is PIH, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, preterm labor, and possibly a slightly higher risk of miscarriage. And that may be occurring because there's impaired decidual trophoblastic invasion and placentation. And we see that happening again in severely diabetic uh, women. And that's probably related to androgen levels, markers of insulin resistance, and a chronic low inflammation. And again, there's a belief that giving metformin reduces that inflammation. Now, Women with PCOS also have obesity, insulin resistance, impaired glucose metabolism, and a metabolic syndrome. Now, in women whom, again, I'm not saying completely normal ovulatory, but women whom we managed to make ovulatory in PCOS, there seems to be a neuroendocrine and an endocrine and metabolic alterations that's affecting the ovary. And the reason why I think it is important to know that is because remember, women who are PCO-like, who respond to stimulation, do not act completely normally. They produce a higher number of oocytes. They may head towards ovarian hyperstimulation and IVF. And I, 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 in my personal experience, I believe that they tend to have a similar chance of pregnancy, but that is again debatable. Now, there is an increased oxidative stress, greater amount of re reactive oxygen species, higher source of, lip of lipids inside, and several inflammatory markers of inflammation are present. And it seems that the glucose metabolism in vitro oocytes is increased. And it seems that it does affect final oocyte quality. And we know that in PCOS, oocyte quality in IVF is variable, many immature eggs eggs which, follicles which are empty, GVs, a smaller proportion of, of metaphase two. You also see delayed breakdown in pronuclei. First cleavage tends to be reduced and 
Over time lapse, what has been noticed is that you see a three cell, seven, <coughs> seven cell cleavage is reduced and that has been observed in time lapse. Also something which I slowly, <coughs> slowly started realizing is that there is a problem with endometrial competence. So it exhibits progesterone resistance and there's uh, an altered expression of progesterone receptors. The endometrial also sees impaired glucose metabolism, increased androgen markers. And you see that in some women where to what you may, the endometrium in PCOS does not get thickened by estrogen. And I believe those are exactly the women where androgen levels in the endometrium are much higher. Increased levels of estrogen may also worsen progesterone uh, resistance and the patterns are consistent with low grade inflammation, which again is seen in insulin resistance. And again, as I said, that there is this belief that metformin may lower insulin resistance in the ovary, but also may lower insulin resistance in the endometrium. So when you look at the overall effect in women with PCOS, who we managed to make ovulatory, you'll see a multifactorial affection, maybe not in the same rate as as completely anovulatory PCOS women. So the four key points which are important here are that the overall efficiency of strategy is employed and suggested by international guidelines. We should follow uh, the treatments that are recommended to induce ovulation using letrozole as the first course of treatment. And PCOS women should be counseled about the challenges to fertility potential and I believe that they should be offered earlier treatments to be able to get pregnant. At present, we continue to have a gap. We have a gap of what happens to women with PCOS who become ovulatory with treatment and what is the extent of metabolic or endocrine or uh, utero-placental damage that occurs. And that's something we don't know, but we know that certainly something is there that is going on. So that is in short about a paper, which I think we are slowly understanding. And when you look at the follicle count, you'll see women with cycles of 34 to 38 days, they are ovulating sometimes, they respond better to clomiphene and letrozole. They're not typically PCOS as, as, as such, the markers don't seem so. And I think these are the same women who may be coming to this group and saying, well, that's probably one of the reasons why uh, they're not falling pregnant or IVF, they're not producing good quality embryos or oocytes are changing. And this is that group which I don't know whether giving them metformin may help or giving them metformin uh, through their frozen embryo replacement may enable the uterine resistance to decrease. Those are very much debatable things and at present we just don't know about it. So thank you very much for listening and I uh, hope to see you soon next week.